This is uh, the liner RMS Olympic, headed for France, painted in uh, camouflage dazzle paint, in an attempt to break up her silhouette against the uh, possibility of a U-boat periscope finding her. And this will give you an idea of the scale of that ship. This is a Titanic's propeller at uh, the Harland and Wolf shipyard in Belfast, Northern Ireland. There's Titanic on the right. On the left is her lesser-known elder twin sister, RMS Olympic. Uh, there's an Arel Grandi connection to the ship on the left. Uh, this photograph was taken uh, about 13 months before Titanic foundered during her maiden voyage in the North Atlantic. William Reeves from the Wasna Valley served with the so-called Wild West Division, uh, made up of lumberjacks and cowboys. Uh, those are 91st Doughboys uh, in that photograph. And uh, he was sadly uh, killed in, during the Meuse-Argonne Offensive on October 9th, 1918. Albert Tarwater was from a pioneering family, also in the Wasna Valley, and he too served with William Reeves in the 91st Infantry Division. Sadly, he too was killed uh, in action during the Meuse Argonne Offensive on the night of October 29th as the 91st went in to relieve a French division. He died just two weeks before the armistice. And both had gone off to war as passengers with the rest of the 91st on Olympic. And it was inevitable the flu would come to the central coast. It killed an oil field worker in October of 1918. Astoundingly, this headline appeared the very next day. This Dr. Paulding was probably the most unpopular man in northern Santa Barbara County because he took an aggressive approach to the flu. The flu got so serious in Arroyo Grande that Dr. Ed Paulding and his school teacher wife Clara turned their home on Crown Hill into a hospital with as many as 20 patients at a time under the Paulding's roof. At one point, 200 people a day were dying in San Francisco and it was in the Bay Area where two local residents lost their lives, Evelyn Dana, and that's uh, Vernon Thurwell with the 1918 high school basketball team. Thurwell was waiting uh, for uh, his entry into the U U.S. Army, wanted to join the fight. Uh, the flu claimed him instead. No family suffered more during the pandemic than the Fosters. It was a terrible year. Gladys Foster Hobbs had lost a baby boy just over the county line. Uh, he's buried in Fellows, uh, was stillborn. Then uh, two of her brothers-in-law, one died of a heart condition. Uh, he was fighting to get into the army just like Vernon Thurwell was despite his physical infirmity. Another brother was accidentally shot during a deer hunting uh, expedition in the Kuyama Valley. And then Gladys got sick. Her uh, big sister uh, was devoted to her and nursed her until the end. 
and then her big sister died of the flu as well. It was typical of the 1918 flu. Uh, Gladys was still in her 20s and Faye in her 30s. The flu's victims overwhelmingly tended to be young people. And here is Faye with her husband and little girl. Well, uh, if people were looking for peace in the 1920s, they didn't exactly get it. These are sheriff's deputies and citizens breaking up individual bottles of beer and pouring the contents down the gutter. I imagine by the time the day ended that all of these guys smelled like bottles of beer. And of course, prohibition was extremely difficult to enforce. Even uh, in San Luis Obispo County Jail, where the contents of confiscated liquor bottles disappeared mysteriously, the bottles were still there in the sheriff's bullpen. It was just the liquor that was gone. I've always thought the suspect probably had a long straw. And our coast, that's Cave Landing, Pirate's Cove on the left, Spooner's Cove near Los Osos on the right, both were uh, ideal for bootleggers smuggling Canadian whiskey ashore. Uh, large ships offshore, uh, the liquor would be offloaded onto fishing boats or smaller boats and brought ashore at these two places. poor Coast Guard was thoroughly outmanned. Uh, the patrols to interdict bootleggers consisted of a, a World War I sub-chaser on the left, and far worse, on the right, a surplus U.S. Navy tug. Her crew nicknamed her the Sea Cow uh, because her top speed was eight knots. For small-time bootlickers, Alex had a restaurant in Napomo, and it was known that you could buy alcohol from him. He later opened Alex's barbecue in Shell Beach, which caused such consternation when it was destroyed, leveled without warning to make way for new construction a few years ago. Don Gullickson, a wonderful man, remembered that uh, when he was a little boy before his dad, Oli, and his friends uh, went on hunting trips. They liked to take along a small amount of fire water with them. So they went down to the beach. Uh, Don went with them. The reasoning was that sheriff's deputies would never suspect a group of men with a five-year-old boy tagging along. But he told me that uh, he, he think they bought the booze from some guy named Alex. Slightly bigger uh, local bootlegger was O.T. Buck, who owned what is today McClintock's Saloon, oh, to have bought real estate there. Uh, Buck, is said, provided the alcohol for Hearst Castle. Now, Mr. Hearst was violently anti-alcohol. Uh, the mistress, the hostess uh, of La Cuesta Encantada, the Enchanted Hill, which is what Hearst called it, was Marion Davies. Here she is next to Charlie Chaplin, uh, who was, by the way, an enormously gifted actress, a comedian. Uh, so you can see uh, that O.T. Buck's work has been accomplished, uh, especially that lady at the far left holding her beer. And of course, there were certain guests who would have never tolerated the absence of alcohol. Most of all, the uh, the man in the center, Winston Churchill, who liked to begin his day with brandy and punctuate it with other drinks throughout the day. Here's Maddie uh, in uh, the 1940s, greatly expanded today. Uh, it is, of course, F. McClintock's. Maddie had a beer parlor in downtown Pismo Beach and during the war uh, became 
legendary for uh, certain other activities involving the female gender and local soldiers. My uh, mentor, Dan Krieger, uh, talked to her once, and she stoutly maintained she was just doing her patriotic duty. Maddie was a hoot. Uh, she was funny. Uh, she was one of the most generous citizens of Pismo Beach and gave freely to many civic causes. And I found an article in the Tribune. Uh, the San Luis Obispo coast was, uh, again, because of its remoteness, a uh, favored place for bootlegging, including this man shooting pool in Pismo Beach. Uh, tradition has it that that man is Al Capone, who was in California at the time this photograph was taken. There's no record of him visiting Pismo Beach. Uh, but that place today, the pool room, is the Cool Cat Cafe. And about where that waiter is standing, I am of the opinion that should be named the Al Capone Memorial Booth. There should be a little brass plaque there, I think. And we didn't uh, lack for local purveyors of booze, bootleggers all over the place, and even a still in Price Canyon. We associate those with Appalachia or the Ozarks. Nope, we had them in Price Canyon. Meanwhile, this is a Rio Grande Union High School on Crown Hill. This was built in 1916. And uh, some of the senior boys started showing up to class intoxicated, which probably explains their grades in trigonometry. When the state superintendent of school heard about this, he hit the roof. What followed shortly was a massive series of raids, you know, over 20 agents on various places in, I'm sorry to pick on you, Pismo Beach, but the raids were on places in Pismo Beach. As uh, was one episode of Chicago-style violence, uh, the photo was taken, obviously, in New York or Chicago, but the victim was in Pismo Beach, and he was a butcher named Gus, who was just out shore fishing early one morning, he was the wrong man in the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, bootleggers nearby shot him dead. They did not want any witnesses to what they were up to. And this is Sheriff Jess Lowry with the most spectacular bust during Prohibition in San Luis Obispo County. He either uh, had a tip or just had a good cop's nose, but he pulled over this truck in Pismo, and it was carrying a uh, large load of lumber. When Lowry began shoving the lumber aside, Lord, look at what he found. 1,000 gallons of pure Canadian whiskey. Good job, Sheriff Lowry. And it was federal agents who arrested a bootlegger named Pico Conero, uh, south of here near Guadalupe. Uh, and uh, Pico Conero was kind of a small fish. No, it was Tony who was the big fish. He was a bootlegger too. When Prohibition ended, he turned to a new trade. Just outside the three mile limit, he uh, owned gambling ships. This photograph, those are federal agents in the smaller boat about to raid one of Tony's ships. They had fire hoses turned on them. It's pretty ritzy. Uh, roulette tables, slot machines, blackjack tables, uh, cuisine, the advertisement notes by Henri. Uh, the ship looks a little bit like the Queen Elizabeth. I, I don't think that's exactly what Tony's gambling ships looked like. He would open one of the first casinos in uh, Las Vegas, which would mysteriously burn. Uh, they uh, might have been uh, the work of Lucky Luciano. And Tony later mysteriously died. That might have been the work of Lucky Luciano as well. Tony was uh, 
fictionalized uh, as a gambler with a heart of gold in the film Mr. Lucky with uh, Cary Grant and Lorraine Day. I'm not sure Tony's heart was quite made of gold. Prohibition ends with the uh, uh, FDR's administration in March of 1933, but it was out of the frying pan and into the fire. There was a new crisis to face.